Citroën, the famous manufacturer of some of the most French cars on the planet, a compliment or an insult depending on the decade. The late 90s and the early 2000s wasn't a golden period for mass market cars wherever you went, and unfortunately this truth manifested itself quite spectacularly in France, with Citroën releasing the little Zara in 1997. It was not a great car, in fact it was a bit sh so how then did it become the basis for one of Rally's most dominant race cars? Well, that's today's tale. And stick around, because even after the Zara's heyday, this story only gets wilder. Citroën, part of PSA Peugeot Citroën, now Stellantis, were looking to replace the aging ZX in the mid-1990s. Naturally, they didn't want to spend too much money doing this, and so the new car built on the old car's chassis, making minor improvements, and of course being adorned with a fresh new body, ready for the 1997 launch. By all accounts, the body design they came up with, inspired by the Bertoni design Xantia, according to Citroën, left no real impression on the press or the public. To put it simply, it was very boring. The choice of engines wasn't particularly inspiring either, with a range of petrol and diesel engines no larger than 2 litres, all sending power to the front wheels. The Zara was never built to be any more than a cheap family car. No frills, no thrills. So it looked dull, it was kinda slow, and to add salt to the wound, reviews, even at the time, complained that the handling was vague. It's not a great thing for handling to be. But my point is, using this car as a base for a serious performance car? It just seems laughable, at least at face value. Enter the Citroën Zara kit car. It was built for the Formula 2 kit car regulations, which started life as the FIA 2-litre World Rally Cup before becoming the Super 2000 class. The Zara kit car was developed by Citroën Sport and weighed in at just 960 kilograms. It was powered by a 2-litre petrol engine connected to the front wheels. The car did compete in some WRC races, but of course being in a lower class, it was never destined to be super competitive. In fact, due to being front-wheel drive only, the Zara kit car was only allowed to compete on asphalt trucks in the WRC. Despite this fact, it did manage to pick up three podium finishes and two outright wins, an extremely impressive feat. The true success, however, was seen in the lower-level championships the car was really designed for. Philippe Bugalski won six out of ten events at the French Rally Championship in 1998, taking overall victory, and the following year was even better, with Bugalski winning 9 out of 10 events with his trusty Zara kit car, a truly dominant performance. Jesus Puras won the Spanish National Rally Championship three times from 1998 to 2000 using a Zara kit car. And then, in 2001, it won yet again in France in the hands of Sébastien Loeb. Remember that name. If you're enjoying the video so far, tap the like button. It makes a huge difference. Thank you. Now, it's worth pointing out that the similarities between the Zara road car and the pocket rocket Zara kit car were minimal. But that doesn't matter, because what wins on Sunday sells on Monday. Citroën just needed a bigger stage. The kit car class that Citroën had been dominating was ending in 2001, but they didn't want to stop competing. They needed a new car. The Zara's reputation was strong off the back of the kit car's success, and so the new car would once again run with the Zara name. This new car was a very different beast though, built now for the World Rally Car class. This was the big leagues now. The Zara WRC, as the new car was known, was powered by a 2-litre turbocharged inline four-cylinder engine capable of producing around 310 brake horsepower, but crucially, this time sending power to all four wheels. The new car stumbled out of the gate, failing to live up to expectations in 2001, though it did claim a single victory at the Tour de Course in the hands of Jesus Porras. 2002 was a similar story, with the car performing reasonably, but just not well enough. Sebastian Loeb won the Deutschland Rally and the Monte Carlo Rally too, before the latter was taken away thanks to a penalty for an illegal tyre change. By this point, Citroën were middling at best, but 2003 would see their luck take a turn. Loeb and his longtime co-driver Daniel Elena won in Monte Carlo, Germany and Italy that year, missing out on the Drivers' Championship by a single point. 
However, thanks to Carlos Sainz winning in Turkey, Citroën claimed the manufacturer's title in 2003. It would turn out to be the beginning of something remarkable. 2004 saw the Zara WRC dominate the season, with Loeb and Elena winning six events, confidently claiming the Drivers' Championship. And with Sainz picking up a win with his co-driver Marc Marti in Argentina, Citroën won the Constructors' Championship too for the second year running. 2005 saw a somehow even more insanely dominant performance for Loeb and his mighty Zara, as they picked up 11 wins throughout the season, claiming another Drivers' Championship and another Constructors' Championship with the help of Francois Duval and Sven Smeet's victory in the Australian Rally. With the global reach of WRC, it can be easy to forget that the Zara didn't discriminate when it came to who to beat. Kenneth Hansen had been driving a Zara WRC in the FIA European Rallycross Championship since 2000, and doing well. That's actually a huge understatement. Hansen won every year from 2000 to 2005. That's six consecutive European titles, a frankly absurd achievement, and an excellent demonstration of the quality of both driver and machine. 2006 saw Loeb pilot the Zara to eight more wins, securing him three consecutive Drivers' Championship titles. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite enough to secure another Constructors' Championship title, which went to Ford. For the following year, the Zara was replaced both on and off the track with the C4. Mercifully, the road-going C4 was a significant improvement over the by this point ancient and decrepit Zara. But just how would this transition serve their rally effort? Now, I've got to be honest with you, I was going to end this video here. The Zara's story has been told. But I can't leave you with the impression that Citroën, Sebastien Loeb, Daniel Elena had their stories end here too. Because let me tell you, they were just getting started. The Citroën C4 WRC was a beast. The car kept the 2-litre turbocharged inline four-cylinder engine, and it kept approximately the same power output. The regulations made sure of that, but make no mistake, this was a very different car. 2007 was its first competitive year, and it came out swinging, winning its debut event in Monte Carlo in the hands of Loeb, who would go on to win seven of the remaining 15 events that year, claiming a fourth consecutive Drivers' Championship, with Citroën only narrowly losing the Constructors' Championship to Ford yet again. 2008 was much the same. I'm sure you know the story by now. Loeb and Elena dominated the season, winning 11 of the 15 rallies, bagging Loeb yet another Drivers' Championship and Citroën a Constructors' Championship for their effort. By this point, Sebastian Loeb and Citroën had formed one of the most dominant forces the sport had ever seen. Loeb had now won five Drivers' Championships, and there was no indication that the carnage was going to end. And end, it did not. 2009, Drivers and Constructors title. 2010, Drivers and Constructors title. Now Loeb had seven consecutive wins under his belt, and Citroën had won six of the last eight World Rally Championships, and yet they kept pushing. 2010 was the final race year for the C4 WRC, but it was not the end for this dynasty. They replaced the C4 with the DS3 WRC for the following year. The DS3 WRC was a bit different to its predecessor, using a smaller 1.6-litre turbocharged engine instead of the 2-litre units that were found in the Zara and the C4. Didn't matter though, because guess who they got to drive it? Yes, Sebastian Loeb and Daniel Elena were back yet again, and by this point, the results were predictable. 2011 was the first racing year for the new car. I won't drag it out, it won. Drivers and constructors, the whole thing. Then, yep, both again in 2012, before Citroën finally, and I'm sure out of pity, finally let someone else win. Sebastian Loeb remains today the driver with the most World Rally Championship titles in the world. He won nine drivers' titles consecutively, setting the record for the most event and stage wins too along the way. Citroën hasn't won a WRC title since 2012, but holds eight constructors' titles, making them the second most decorated constructor in the sport, 
lagging behind Lancia by two. And it all started with the little Citroën Zara. Check out this video about the Lancia 037 for more great rally history, this time in the crazy Group B era. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, and until next time, goodbye.